Okay, uh, I've reached a point where I want to quit on this bank of foliage here. I'm quite pleased with it, and with, uh, when this is dry, with a little more tweaking, I'll have it the way I want it. It's, it's going to look real nice. It's time to turn my attention to the field. To do the field, I'm going to stay with this pool that I have here, and I'm going to start with the darkest darks, and I'm going to work towards the lights. So I'm going to start with a raw sienna and my dark green and a burnt sienna and a turquoise. I want to start with reintroducing some of the darks where I see them. Now, there's on the photograph you see that there's some short grass, but there is a sense of the lay of the land here. So what I'm going to try to do very quickly here is I'm going to go in and with the, my magic stroke, I'm going to try to show the sense of the lay of the land with some of these darks. Okay, magic stroke. Going against the bristle of the brush. Going against the bristle of the brush with a zigzaggy stroke. Now these darks, you don't want them to all be the same color. So every time you go to the palette, change your color just a little bit. All right, now I'm going to go back up and try to find some of these darks that are in some of these places back here. And I'm going to make them a little cooler by adding the, the turquoise to it. Because they're farther away, yep. You have to have the darks in there so that the lights look uh, natural, natural. Very lightly back in here, introduce a few darks. Now there's some ironweed back there. And the ironweed has a very dark base. So I'm going to put a very dark base on some of the ironweed that I'm going to put in here. Ironweed back in here also. There's a real dark kind of bank over in this area. Get some of these. A little bit of a red here. I, I see a color in there that I kind of like. Now I'm going to go with a little bit more of a raw sienna, which is not quite so dark, and a little bit more earthy. Take a little bit of orange. I've introduced some darks which that I would call number threes and now I'm going to start going towards my number ones and to do the number ones I'm going to scrape some of these darks off of here just so that I have a little bit more of a mixing area and less likely to contaminate what I'm trying to do so I now have white Cadmium yellow, cadmium orange. I've got some raw sienna. I'm going to have to resupply with raw sienna. But I'm going to try to keep this very light and try to play my contrast. And in the photograph, there is some goldenrod, and there's some ironweed, and there's some joe pie weed. 
Now, I may try to put some of those colors in at this time, or I may elect to wait until my third sitting. The goal is that at the end of this sitting, I have the painting about 90% done, 90 to 95% done, and it's just those final details that remain to be done. So, with that in mind, I'm going to start now from my farthest point away. I'm going to consult my photograph, and I see some various colors and things going on back there. So, I'm going to go ahead now, and I'm going to suggest some of what I see in the photograph, but I don't want to be a prisoner of it. I'm going to be using some of the colors that I see in the photograph, where I see them, but I'm not going to be a prisoner of it. Right. I'm going to use um, my raw sienna, burnt sienna, yellow, orange, reds, and I'm going to pop some of these colors in that I see where they're at and essentially try to work from the back and come forward. Where do I see some really light colors? Well, I see some light but cool greens way back in the distance in a couple of places. So I'm going to try to work with the, 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 the value and the color to create visual interest. I'm going to, for the most part, I'm going to try to start from the back and work forward. I'm going to try to break up any hard edges. Somewhat green colors, cool greens in a few places.
Now you see where I go over the darks that I put in, the darks fit in as shadows somewhat. I am using a lot of the magic stroke. Shorter strokes in the background, longer strokes in the front. It's kind of on the corner of it. Pretty much on the edge of the brush. Just about every time I go to the palette, I change my color just a little bit. Almost every time I go, I change it just slightly. Sometimes a little more, sometimes a little less. And I've gotten rid of my dark there, so I have to restate my dark. Yeah, kind of with the edge, with the corner. Uh, a filbert's brush doesn't have a corner, but if it had a corner, we're on its corner. Now I'll get a little bit more of a fresher green up here. I'm using the texture from last week absolutely as much as I possibly can. Okay, now I'm going to consult my photograph. And I see ironweed in here. And look at what that does to the painting. Now there's more ironweed back in here. So I'm going to take a little bit of lemon yellow just to show you and we're not going to try to finish it. We're just going to put a little bit of the lemon yellow on to suggest what the goldenrod looks like. Now, I will have to have a little bit of the cadmium yellow, and I've run out of it, so I'm going to take just a small squirt of cadmium yellow here. 
and will suggest just how much this color snaps up the painting. I'm going to go ahead and clean my brush. Now the goldenrod is a very, very light, pale yellow. So where would I see goldenrod? No, it's lemon yellow, a touch of cadmium yellow. We've done enough for today, and we're going to stop uh, at this point. We're going to let this dry. There's going to be more work done here as the, when this is dry and the finishing touches. This is the close for day two.